the source of power. Man's brain, body, mind, faculties and talents are the mere instruments he uses in demonstrating greatness. In themselves, they do not make him great. A man may have a large brain and a good mind, strong faculties and brilliant talents, yet he is not a great man unless he uses all these in a great way. That quality which enables man to use his abilities in a great way makes him great, and to that quality we give the name of wisdom. Wisdom is the essential basis of greatness. Wisdom is the power to perceive the best ends to aim at, and the best means for reaching those ends. It is the power to perceive the right thing to do. The man who is wise enough to know the right thing to do, who is good enough to wish to do only the right thing, and who is able and strong enough to do the right thing, is a truly great man. He will instantly become marked as a personality of power in any community, and man will delight to do him honor. Wisdom is dependent upon knowledge. Where there is complete ignorance, there can be no wisdom, no knowledge of the right thing to do. Man's knowledge is comparatively limited, and so his wisdom must be small unless he can connect his mind with knowledge greater than his own and draw from it, by inspiration, the wisdom that his own limitations deny him. This he can do. This is what the really great men and women have done. Man's knowledge is limited and uncertain. Therefore he cannot have wisdom in himself. Only God knows all truth. Therefore only God can have real wisdom, or the right thing to do at all times and man can receive wisdom from God. I proceed to give an illustration. Abraham Lincoln had limited education, but he had the power to perceive truth. In Lincoln, we see preeminently apparent the fact that real wisdom consists in knowing the right thing to do at all times and under all circumstances. In having the will to do the right thing, and in having talent and ability enough to be competent and able to do the right thing. Back in the days of the abolition agitation, and during the compromise period, when all other men were more or less confused as to what was right and as to what ought to be done, Lincoln was never uncertain. He saw through the superficial arguments of the pro-slavery men. He saw also the impracticability and fanaticism of the abolitionists. He saw there is the a right principle of power in every person. By the, best By the intelligent use and direction of this principle, man, man can develop his own mental faculties. Do right to do, man has an inherent power by which he may grow in whatsoever direction he is. And there does not appear to be any so limit to the possibilities the right of his growth. No man has yet become so great in any faculty, but that it is possible for someone else to become greater. The possibility is in the original substance from which man is made. Genius is a misused flow in man. Genius is more than talent. Talent may merely be one faculty developed out of proportion to other faculties, but genius is the union of man and God in the acts of the soul. Great men are always greater than their deeds. They are in connection with a reserve of the power that is without the We do not know where the boundary of the mental powers of man is. We do not even know that there is a boundary. The power of conscious growth is not given to the lower animals. It is man's alone and may be developed and increased by it. The lower animals can, to a great extent, be trained and developed by man. But man can train and develop himself. He alone has this power, and he has it to an apparently unlimited extent. The purpose of life for man is growth. Just as the purpose of life for trees and plants is growth, trees and plants grow automatically and along with the plants. Man can grow as he will. Trees and plants can only develop certain possibilities and characteristics. Man can develop any power which is or has been shown by any person anywhere. Nothing that is possible in spirit is impossible in flesh and blood. Nothing that man can think is impossible in action. Nothing that man can imagine is impossible in realization. Man is formed for growth, and he is under the necessity of growth. It is essential to his happiness that he should continuously advance. Life without progress becomes unendurable, and the person who ceases from growth must either become imbecile or insane. The greater and more harmonious and well-rounded his growth, the happier all will be. And
no truth. There is no possibility the any man that is not in every man. Wisdom. But if they proceed wisdom naturally, not two men will grow God. into the same thing or be alive. And every man three. comes into the world with a predisposition to grow along certain lines, and growth is easier for him along those lines than in any other way. This is a wise provision.